This is one of the funniest things you will ever see. It is no secret that the panelists of The View have constantly shown hostility towards celebrities who don't align with their progressive ideology. Well, earlier this year when rapper Killa Mike went on the show after winning three Grammys, they were quick to turn things political, and you definitely want to stick to the end because the way he shut down Sonny Austin is beyond amazing. But before I delve deeper into it, make sure to subscribe for more discussions like this. Telling people not to not to stop dreaming. Yeah. No, you cannot stop Anything dreaming. Anything is possible. You have to, you have to. You, you, you have to keep whatever nine-year-old, 12-year-old, 15-year-old is in your head, keep that child alive. No, no matter what you see in the mirror, you're still that child. And you, your imagination has to be bigger than the room, bigger than the building, bigger than the sky, because if you keep the imagination alive, everything is possible. That's right. When you limit your imagination, nothing becomes as possible right. as, you, as it could be, so. Now, yeah. If you've never heard of Killa Mike, he's one of the longtime rappers in the Atlanta scene, known for being part of Run the Jewels mostly, who started his career as a lyricist and carved a unique space for him in hip hop, blending music with activism. In addition to his musical achievements, Mike expanded his influence advocating for local policies that benefit black Americans, thus becoming a prominent voice in political circles. His ability to connect with people from different walks of life while staying true to his message made him a respected figure beyond the world of hip hop. Fast forward for 2024, and Killa Mike's journey reached new heights with his rap career earning him three Grammy Awards. His critically acclaimed album, Michael won awards for Best Rap Album, Best Rap Performance, and Best Rap Song. And while most people would expect this appearance on The View to be a moment of celebration, especially since this was only five days after such a major career milestone, things took an odd turn with Sonny Austin. Instead of offering congratulations, she grilled him with pointed questions, almost as if she had a personal grudge against him. Watch how it all started next. You know, um, I'm a former prosecutor. Yeah. And there were some other headlines that came out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was very upset about it. Yeah. Because it was unnecessary. Uh -huh. And you don't do that on that special night. Yeah. Especially for what I read about. Yeah. So what I'm going to ask you is, um, there was an incident at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. It led to you being taken out in handcuffs and arrested. That was wrong. Obviously, it's an ongoing legal matter, so I don't know how much you can say about it. Well, as a prosecutor, you know I can't say it. You can't say it much. <laughs> but can you just give us some sort of description? Because people are no, saying, this, they're I, talking too much. I think about the backstage it. was overcrowded. I think the winners were exuberant. And I think security got a little overzealous, and that's all. I, it's all, you know, it's, it's water under a bridge for me. Yeah. I like to say all of my heroes have been in handcuffs Malcolm, Martin, Mandela, <laughs> Megan. So, you know, I don't. I don't I, 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 I walked out with the same dignity and respect that I walked Good. in with. And I, I would just, I would implore people to just take that from it. Don't, don't dwell on the bad stuff. This is shocking, isn't it? What she's referencing here is how Mike was arrested the night of the Grammys after a backstage altercation with the security, and he was quickly released afterwards. But it felt as though Sonny was deliberately trying to overshadow his success with controversy, as if the moment of his arrest was the only thing she noticed about the night. And as a former prosecutor, she knows by heart that Mike can't share much about an ongoing open case. So bringing it up won't add anything of value to the conversation, other than making sure that everyone watching the interview knows that this incident happened. But as always, Mike stood tall, turning that moment into another example of his resilience and refusal to be defined by negativity. But things started to take a political turn, and the panel's true intentions were unfolding. With each question they were asking, see what Alyssa Farah asked him in the next clip. You're equally uh, well known for being a political activist on top of your music, and you were a campaign surrogate for Bernie Sanders. You campaigned for your home state Democratic senators, Raphael Warnock and John, and John Ossoff. Ossoff yep. Yeah, and um, you got some attention recently for being somewhat critical of President Biden, saying you weren't ready to endorse him yet. What's your holdup there? What's my hope? Well, first of all, I think everyone should focus on hyper-local. We, we get caught up yeah. in the soap opera of federal elections, and that's fine. But if you are concerned with the federal election, you don't know who your city council or your wardsman is, right. you don't know who your mayor is, and you're not have, you don't have a good list of state representatives or governor, then you're just a part of whoever wow. wins the Super Bowl yeah. or fanfare. Right. Even though we have a Republican governor, mm -hmm. Brian Kemp, I have a good relationship with him. I like what he's done in terms of Georgia business. We've been leading business amongst all states for the last 10 years, and he brought back the Hope Scholarship and expanded it. So if you're a kid in Georgia, you're poor, you gotta be average, you can go to college for free or trade school. So in my community, oh, wow. girls are going to college, but boys don't have anywhere to go and they're not choosing to. In my community, I have a push for trades. That's why I support organizations like Georgia Youth Build. I support organizations like 
um, Next Level Boys Academy because they, uh, they usher our boys. I need my daughters to be able to marry somebody. Right. <laughs> so, and, and even in that case, I, I have said, okay, this governor's doing a good job. In terms of nationally, I'm just kind of doing what my grandfather said, staying out of white folks' business and watching what happens. <laughs> that question was framed in a way that guilt trips him in to not endorsing Joe Biden, but as Mike mentions, he has long been a force of positive change in the local community of Atlanta. He's actively involved in efforts to uplift and improve the lives of young black Americans. On another interview with the Huffington Post, Mike attributed his activism to his grandmother, who used to take him to city council meetings even though he was just five years old. He was quoted as saying, quote, my grandmother would take me and have me sit there, adding, so as this happens, I asked her, why do we do this? She says, because this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to help your neighbor. That never left me. And that's what he modeled his activism around. You see, Killer Mike has used his platform and resources to inspire the next generation, stressing the importance of education, economic empowerment, civic engagement, and community development. Through his work, he has become a role model, showing that it's possible to be successful while never forgetting where you came from. As expected, Sonny was visibly irritated that a celebrity of this caliber wasn't even falling in line with her ideological agenda, which led to this historical altercation. You lost me a little bit with your support of Kemp, but let me let me tell you this. Not support of Kemp. Of that's, policies, that's, policies, I mean, yeah. say, that's some misinformation. I, you cannot like me, but don't lie on me. I saw someone I really respect, a black woman who's a commentator. So you don't and support him, and you like said, his policies. Well, I support some the, specific ones I, Named. Beyond it, he's the governor of my state, so I have to be involved with him because well, I can't divorce myself. But let me say this. If you criticize someone, don't lie. Yes. Don't say I didn't support Abrams because I did. Mm -hmm. Don't say that I didn't don't support Democrats because I've helped get three Democratic mayors elected. I've helped get two state representatives elected. But if someone is in the king's seat, I'm not going to not have dinner with the king on the behalf of my people. Well, I have to do that. Let me that is amazing. I think this moment speaks volumes about Killer Mike's approach to leadership and politics because his cooperation with the government wasn't about endorsing his political platform. It was about getting things done for the community. It proves the man is not interested in partisan politics or aligning with one side of the sake of appearances. Instead, Mike has repeatedly shown that his primary goal is to improve community, no matter who holds office. His attitude reflects the kind of pragmatic, results-oriented mindset that is sorely needed in today's divided political landscape. Leaders come and go, but communities endure, and Mike understands that building real, lasting change means working with whoever is in power to get things done for the people. He also touches on this topic in another interview, saying, People got mad that I didn't publicly support their candidate, but they forgot the ones I did publicly support. Then they'll lie and say I did publicly support someone else, adding, I want to put out dope art, and if my art strikes you, it strikes you, but I'm not a politician's tool. In a time when political loyalty takes precedence over meaningful progress, Killer Mike's approach stands out as a model of how to engage with leadership on both sides of the aisles without compromising one's principles. It's this kind of attitude that could help heal division and bring people together to address the pressing issues that affect everyday Americans. What are your thoughts on this? Do you agree with Mike's assessment here? Let's get the conversation rolling in the comments down below.